So why did I wait so long to make a review of this amp? The reason is, is that I was really busy making content all about the AC-15 and it never really occurred to me that doing a review might help some people find out whether the AC-15 is right for them. And it's a question that's been occurring throughout the past five years and I'm always answering them individually when I get them, but I thought, what if I make a actual review with common questions about these amps? So this way it's gonna be structured. If you follow the whole video, all the answers should technically be in this video. There might be some very specific questions that I couldn't foresee or think about, but logically everything should be chronologically ordered and you can use the chapters. They're gonna be in the video description so you can hop around to the different sections of this review. So one of the common questions about the AC-15 is whether it can stay clean at louder volumes. And the answer to that is not really. And I'm saying that kind of like a statement with a question at the end because the amp itself doesn't have a whole lot of headroom. So if you're cranking it up just to be louder, you are going to get into overdrive territory. So that's where your volume on your guitar might be the savior. The amp itself is not like a Fender Twin or you can just crank it up and still have all that clean headroom. So the trick is, personally, that I find with these amps is that you take the master volume and you bring it to either halfway or a little more or actually crank up the master volume. Yes, you will introduce some hiss. That goes without saying. But after that, you can use your channel volume for headroom. Now, the other thing for headroom is that if you use a top boost, you're going to get way more gain because that channel uh, input is really much louder than the normal. So if you're really aiming for more clean headroom, I would say go for the normal channel, crank up the master volume, adjust your channel volume to taste, and then ride your guitar volume because you really can't pull miracles with this amp. It will get into overdrive territory. So that's my tip for you for keeping it clean at louder volumes. <laughs> So if you like this video so far, give the video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot of content dedicated to the Vox AC-15 and I have some more coming. So if you do, thanks for your support. Now we're going to be talking about overdrive sounds with the amp. So that means getting all your dirt from the AC-15. There's really two things that you must consider when you're using this amp is which input are you using? Are you using the normal or the top boost? Now, the main difference between the both of them is that the normal channel doesn't have an EQ. So that means that it has way less gain because you're not sending the signal through the bass and the treble. So you're not getting as much volume added to the whole signal. So if you're using the normal channel, you might find that it works best with humbuckers. Because if you're using something like a Tele or a Strat, you're going to get some distortion, but not too much. So typically, I like to use the Strat or the Tele through the top boost if I'm going to get the gain from the amp itself. And if I have high output humbuckers, I go through the normal. Or if I intend to have just a light crunch, I might go through the normal and then use pedals to boost the input. Something like a Klontype pedal, a Tube Screamer, or a Treble Booster, something like that. I find that those type of boost pedals work better for my taste through the normal channel. But it's really a matter of 
testing it out yourself and see which input you prefer for the overall distortion. But that is my tip for you. Experiment with the both of them and see which one makes more sense. <laughs> So it's very hard to talk about the AC-15 without mentioning the reverb or the tremolo. So those two are kind of like polar opposite when it comes to users of the AC-15. So let's start with the least favorable, which is the reverb. A lot of people complain about the reverb in the AC-15. And personally, I don't know why, because there's nothing wrong with the reverb in this amp. But let's say you only want the reverb in the amplifier and you're one of those who doesn't like the sound of the reverb. You can modify it by just buying another reverb tank. You also have to do a bit of research to get the right model because the, the length of the reverb tank and how it functions with the amp is really important too. But you can mod that and that's like maybe like $30, $40 uh, for that specific mod. Some people complain about the reverb I have no issues with it. I think it sounds fine. It doesn't step in the way of the guitar signal so much. So if you're looking for big and lush, this might not be the reverb for you, but I would say maybe put the online opinions aside and try it for yourself. I think there's nothing wrong with that reverb and I've used it extensively. Where I find that you might get a more manageable reverb from it is if you pay attention to how it sounds with the master down versus the master up, you're gonna notice that the more you increase the master volume on the AC-15, the more the reverb sits behind your signal so you get more clarity. So that might be an issue that some people have, but since I found this out, I tend to crank the master volume and adjust the channel volume to taste, and I had no issues with the reverb. Now the tremolo is actually a fan favorite. A lot of people love the tremolo from the Vox AC-15, and with a good reason. It sounds awesome. There's nothing wrong with that tremolo. It works as it should. It can go from very slow to rather fast. So if you're looking for any of those extreme or anything in between, you're gonna be well served with the tremolo. So yeah, nothing negative to say about either the reverb or the tremolo. Personally, I enjoy both, although I don't use them as much as I probably could, but it's not really in the style of music that I play anyways. So yeah. Both of them are great.
Now it's going to be really hard for me not to talk about the top boost versus the normal channel because it's one of those topics where people have a lot of debates and I find the debate to be completely useless. It depends on you as a player. The options are there for you. Just experiment with them. But if you need to know what the differences are, I'm going to try to distill this down to the most basic elements. The Vox CC15 is not a two-channel amp. It's a single-channel amp, meaning that although we use the terms channels, so top boost channel and normal uh, channel, they're not channels, they're inputs. It's the same channel. It's a single-channel amp. So this means that the normal channel just doesn't have an EQ section. So the EQ section on the top boost is bass and treble, but the interaction between the both of them also changes the mids. So that means that going through those two extra pots is giving you way more output as well. This changes how the amp reacts to pickups. It changes how the amp reacts to pedals. So if you're really looking for a pedal platform, you're probably gonna notice a difference in how especially higher gain pedals sound. So if you're using fuzz, if you're using distortion, you might not like the way that the amp compresses or clamps down on those more like full frequency type pedals. But if you're using something like the Timmy or a Blues Driver, something that's lower gain, you might get away with it going through the top boost channel. Plenty of people use the top boost channel with pedals. Now I've made a video, which I'm gonna link here in the cards, where I show the difference between the top boost channel and the normal channel with fuzz, and the difference is drastic. You also have to keep in mind that both these channels are susceptible to how they react to the master volume. So if you're gonna be using fuzz through the top boost channel, you're probably gonna to want to increase the master volume as high as you can get away with, and then adjust your channel volume to taste, because that also has an impact, and I kind of show that in the video that I talked about. So top boost and normal, they're both the same channel. They're just two different inputs. One of them actually has way more headroom, which is the normal channel, and the top boost has far less headroom. So if you're gonna be comparing them, the top boost sounds louder, so a lot of people love how it's just immediately in your face. And there's no right or wrong here. It really depends on what you're into. I suggest experimenting with the both of them. I'm a normal channel advocate. I love it. But when I use my Strat, it has much weaker output. It sounds better through the top boost. So that's the exception for me. If I'm just plugging in a guitar straight into the amp, I tend to favor the normal. But when I go with really weak pickups like those on my Strat, that's where I'm gonna be using the top boost. So both of them have their uses, they're both practical. Just think of it as lower input volume or higher input volume, and then just experiment with pedals and guitars. There's no right or wrong here. So there's no room for debate as far as I'm concerned, it's really a matter of preference. <laughs> biggest debate besides the top boost and normal channel with the AC-15 is which speaker is right to get the true sound of a Vox AC-15. Personally, I'm bored to death with this topic, but I'm still including it in here because some people have that question. 
what is the true sound of a Vox? Is it the Alnico Blue or is it some other speaker? And the thing is, is that if Vox are putting the Greenback and the Alnico Blue in this amp, is that you have two different flavors, two different takes on this sound. The price difference can be enough for you to say, I'm just gonna buy the one with the green back and I'll change speakers later. Or you might just wanna buy it at the full price and get the one with the Alnico Blue. I've been playing the AC-15 with the green back for five years. Only recently did I change for an Alnico Blue type speaker. I have the WGS Black and Blue. So it's basically their take on the blue speaker from Celestion. Does it sound better? Does it sound more true to the sound of a Vox? I don't know, I don't care. Uh, it's a great speaker, it works well. It's a different take on that sound because obviously like some people say that 70% of the sound comes from the speaker. But a lot of people want to reference the older amps like the stuff the Beatles were using. You have to keep in mind the Beatles didn't use the Vox AC-15 exclusively. They also used the AC-30. And after the AC-30, they moved on to the AC-50. And those, I have one of those right there. You can't see it, but I have one of those right there. And I have the cab for it right here. And that cab came with Goodman speaker. So is that the real sound of a Vox? Because that's the amp and the speaker combinations they most likely were using on the Ed Sullivan show when people saw them back in the mid-60s. Is that the true sound? Or we have to look for old Fane speakers or old Goodman's? It's really a matter of preference. I've tried the Celestion V30 in the AC-15. I had the uh, the Greenback. I've tried the Black and Blue, which is an Al Alnico style speaker, and they all sound good. And it still sounds like a Vox. So if you have your sights on an amp and you're thinking to yourself, which version should I get? Tell yourself that the easiest mod you can do is swapping out the speaker. So if you're not satisfied with the Greenback or the Alnico Blue or whatever comes with your amp, it's one of the easiest mods you can do. And if you don't know how to do it, just take it to a tech and it takes mere minutes to do. And you're gonna have a massive improvement on your sound if you're not satisfied with what comes with it. So if you're more into high gain stuff, I would suggest either the Greenback or the V30. And the V30 is no slouch with a Vox style amp. So do keep in mind that Bad Cat that make a lot of like Vox style amps use the V30 almost exclusively in their cabinets. So that's something to think about. And the Greenback sounds great if you're into more like higher gain stuff or fuzz. I find that the Greenback performs a little better than the Alnico Blue. So watch some videos. I got a bunch of them on my channel or watch other ones on YouTube and you're gonna get a sense of maybe which speaker is better for what you're going for. But to say that there's a speaker that just gives you the true sound of a Vox, who cares? What do you need? If you need the true sound of a Vox, go for the Alnico Blue. Otherwise, the sky's the limit. Put what you want in there and get your own tone. <laughs> Now, before we get to the whole pedal platform topic, which is coming a bit later in the video, we're gonna be talking about the fan favorite pedals. A lot of people have questions about those. So if you go on forums or Facebook groups, the most commonly suggested pedals for a Vox type amp would be 
the Crowler Hotcake, the Tim V3 or V2, depending on which version, or the Timmy from Paul C. You have the Proco Rat, the Full Tone OCD, the Blues Driver, and maybe some kind of treble booster. Those are the most recommended as far as I can remember. If you remember other ones I might have forgotten, just add them to the list in the comment section. But those are the ones that come up the most often. And for a good reason, they've been tried, tested, and true over, you know, whatever, how many years uh, the modern AC-15 has been around. And people just love those pedals with these amps. Personally, my favorites out of those ones would be um, the Hot Cake. I really like the Hot Cake in terms of what it does with the AC-15. Um, there's the Boss Blues Driver that I also like. And the Proco Rat is pretty cool too. And the Proco Rat and Blues Driver are readily available on the used market. So if you're looking for one and you're not too sure, you don't want to buy it brand new, look on the used market. They can be had for a fairly good price. I think they stick around like the $60 mark for either of them. So grab one of those, try it out. And uh, if you're interested in hearing any of these pedals, I'm going to have a uh, playlist here for you in the cards where you can click and go have a listen. And uh, later on, we're going to be talking about other pedals that I think are worthy of your attention. So let's move on to the next topic. So if you made it this far in the video, we're going to be talking about the pros as far as I can see them and having used the amp for over five years at this point. What are the pros of the Vox AC-15? So we're going to be talking about home use and gigs. Let's start with gigs first. A lot of people ask, is the AC-15 loud enough to play with a band? Now, if your band is a metal core band or you're doing gent, you bought the wrong amp, send it back. If you're playing blues or you're playing maybe even jazz, something that is more manageable volumes and you don't have a Neanderthal drummer just banging the crap out of the drums, you should be good. These amps are really loud and they can keep up with most bands. So if you're wondering, like, is this going to be loud enough? Unless everybody in your band is playing overpowered gear and super loud and you got a drummer that's just hitting the drums like an idiot, you're going to be fine. So those amps for gigs are used plenty. I think it's one of the most common amps beside maybe the Blues Junior. So you're going to see them a lot in gigs. So they are gig worthy. You don't have to worry about it. Now, in terms of home use, I did a video back in 2020 where I showed how to get the best from these amps if you're at home. So are there better options for someone who lives in an apartment? Yes. Uh, the AC4 might be a little more manageable. Uh, the AC10 would be more manageable. So there are amps out there that have lower wattage or not as loud. But if you're really dead set on getting the AC15 because you're trying to keep your options open, maybe you eventually you want to play with a band or maybe you're just kind of not finding anyone to play with at the moment but you don't want to sell your amp i've done a video which i'm going to link here in the cards where i show you tricks with eq and compression so you can keep everything at a manageable level but still get a good tone at home so definitely watch that but yes you can play with it at home there are better amps for that if you're playing exclusively in your apartment and you have paper thin walls Maybe the AC-15 is not the best option, but you can still pull it off because I did. I used to live in an apartment with paper thin walls and I could still rock the AC-15 and get good tones out of it. So I highly suggest you watch this video. So let's talk about the AC-15 as a pedal platform. Some people say that it sucks with pedals. Those are usually people that don't like the Vox sound. But people that love Vox amplifiers and love pedals have no issues using pedals with them. So they are a great pedal platform. And I've done over 400 demos at this point in the Vox Friendly Pedal Series. If you need further proof that this amp is capable of taking pretty much anything you throw at it, I invite you to watch hundreds of hours of videos just to prove the point. So you can go watch that. I'm gonna link it in the video description. It's called the Vox Friendly Pedal Series and there are quite a lot of pedals in there. So if you need proof, that's where you're gonna get it. You don't have to take my word for it. But for those of you who are like, okay, cool. It's a good pedal platform. Where should I start? 
there was the aforementioned uh, classic pedals that everyone likes. And there are some pedals that, to me, really stand out as either budget options or even pedals that are not talked about so much. There is obviously something like the Wampler Tumnus, which is more of a Klon style pedal, but because it's not so thin in the low end, it has a little more girth, it works really well with the AC-15. There's uh, the way huge Red Llama, which sounds great. And I have over here a pedal that uh, is based on that. That's basically two Red Llamas in one circuit. If you're interested, in getting this particular pedal, you can go and check out the link in the description. I'm going to have a link to the podcast, which is the Tone Lounge podcast, where we're going to be giving this one away to one of our uh, subscribers. So definitely go check that out. But uh, yeah, the Red Llama Circuit sounds great. There are uh, more affordable pedals like the K-Line Pure Sky, which is kind of a Timmy or something close to a Timmy type of circuit. And for the whatever $20 that it sells for on Amazon, I highly recommend it. It's a great place to start. And the Proco Rat sounds great, but I much prefer the Donner Dark Mouse, which has the turbo mode. It's not that expensive. And if you're looking for a rat style pedal, that's a great one. Or even the Joyo Splinter, is also excellent. So if you're looking for more budget options, I would recommend those. And if you're looking for more of a full tone OCD, kind of more like Marshall E type of sound, the Joyo um, Ultimate Drive is a very cool one. It's very gamey and it has a lot of bass, but still very cool. So do check those out. And for any other recommendation, I would just check out the Vox Friendly pedal series and go through it. There are some great budget options from Donner, Sonic Cake, um, New X, and Joyo, and maybe other companies that you can check out there too. So one of the most important pros on this list is the overall sound of the Vox AC-15. If you're a fan of the Vox type sound, this is a great, great sounding amplifier. Now, of course, you have to like the sound of a Vox to begin with, so I highly recommend you go to your nearest musical store that has one and you try it out. And if you can, just bring it into a room where you can crank it up a bit and just see how you interact with the amp, because that's really the most important. Vox amps are not Fenders. They're not Marshalls. They are a different beast. And sometimes we like the sound of an amp, and then we try to interact with it, and it just doesn't jive. I've had that experience with Marshall amps. I love the sound of Marshall amps. They are killer amplifiers. But every time I play one, it sounds thin, it sounds raspy, and I just, I'm uninspired by them. But I love hearing other people play through them and I wish I could just bond with these amps because they sound phenomenal. But at the same time, I've tried a box and that was it, I connected with it. So that's the most important. Does the amp inspire you to play? And if it does, then it means that sound interacts with you in a certain way that just inspires songs, inspires, you know, the longevity of how long you're going to practice on the amplifier. So if you plug into it and it doesn't connect, there are a few variables to consider. Maybe you're being distracted by other people, but usually we know if you grab a guitar, you plug into an amp and songs are just pouring out then you found the one. In terms of guitars that can do this, I've been holding this one throughout the whole video because I think it is a prime example of a guitar that sounds phenomenal through a Vox. So Gretsch sounds great. Uh, you have obviously the Rickenbacker guitars that the Beatles were using sound great with a Vox. The Fender Telecaster. So let me just grab this guitar right here. So you grab yourself something like a Fender Telecaster, just classic single coil pickups. I don't have any like humbuckers or anything. Those are like classic Tele pickups. They sound awesome. The twang that comes out of this thing is just killer. Now maybe a less favorable guitar when it comes to Vox would be a Strat, but I really love the sound of a Strat. Some people prefer them through Fender type amps and all that because they sound fuller. 
but a Strat sounds great. So single coil, low output pickups sound great through a Vox. Now maybe you're using higher output pickups. Definitely worth trying out with a Les Paul to see if you like the sound. It reacts differently to humbuckers. So I've found throughout the years that not all humbuckers sound great, in my opinion, for my taste through a Vox. I've found that the lower the output, the much better the amp reacts. So that's definitely a point to consider. So I think the Vox sound, even for the Vox AC15, is absolutely phenomenal if you interact well with it. So definitely go out and try one and see how you react and if it inspires you to play. Now we're going to be talking about the cons of the Vox AC15 because yes, there are some issues with it. So now we're going to be talking about the cons. The first one is the features versus the price point. I think it's probably important to talk about because it's really where you're going to be making the biggest decision. What are you getting versus how much you pay? And now how much you pay? I just did uh, the research. I looked at Sweetwater, I looked at Toman, and I looked at Long & McQuaid. So if you live in Canada, if you live in Europe, or if you live in the States, I'm going to be giving you uh, the prices that I found as of today, January 11th, 2024. If you're watching the video in the future, the prices are going to be different, but this is the price point where it is right now. So Sweetwater, if you want to grab the AC15 with the green back, it's $799. If you want to get, grab the version with the Alnico Blue, it's $1,199. Now the speakers, uh, if you're to buy them brand new from Sweetwater, the green back is $165 and the Alnico Blue is $320. So what you're doing when you buy the Alnico Blue version is you're paying retail price of the Alnico Blue as a premium on top of the, the price of the amp. So if you were to buy the Alnico Blue, uh, the greenback version rather, for $7.99 and you bought the Alnico Blue brand new and you're going to install it, you're paying the exact same price as buying the AC15 that comes with the, the blue speaker. You could buy the greenback version if you have already have a speaker, you know you're gonna put in there, that would make more sense. You do save 320 bucks there. Now over at Toman, it's 749 uh, euros for the version with the greenback and 1,099 euros with the Alnico Blue. Now where it gets really stupid is the version in Canada for the prices. So it's 1,099 for the greenback version. When I bought my amp in 2017, I paid 899 and that was already pretty expensive. Now it's gone up to 1099 In Canada, for whatever version, for whatever reason, the Alnico Blue version sells for $1,649 Canadian. Does the Alnico Blue sell for $649 in Canada? Well, where does the extra 300 bucks come from? I don't know. But for my fellow Canadians, I would suggest getting the greenback version and just get your own Alnico Blue speaker instead of paying the fucking premium on this thing. That's is that's just stupid. Why would you sell the Alnico Blue for six hundred dollars more when the speaker's worth three hundred or somewhat dollars in Canada? There's an, a there's a surcharge on it, so I don't get it. Do with that information what you will, but I would never ever pay. $1,649 for the AC15 with the Alnico Blue. There's no way I would do that, but that's up to you now. Let's talk about the features for the price point. So everything keeps going up and I don't think there's any way around it. So it's really a matter of you considering whether you're gonna buy it brand new or buy used. Here in Europe right now, I've said that the price of the AC15 was, uh, what was it, $749, brand new at Toman. I see them regularly on Facebook Marketplace for €450 Euros to €500. Euros. So in Canada, I'm presuming that at 1099 the amp probably sells for around 700 to $800, unless I'm mistaken. So sometimes going used might be... Uh, more favorable to your wallet. So that's something else to consider. So let's talk about the features with the price point. You have reverb and tremolo, but the foot switch doesn't come with the amp. Why? I don't know. 
but you have to buy one separately. So you do have the option in the back to have a foot switch where you can toggle the reverb and tremolo on and off, but otherwise the amp doesn't come with it. And that's a damn shame. It does not come with a uh, amp cover, so you have to buy that separately. Considering that all the, the controls are on top, dust gets in there and you can end up with scratchy pots. So maybe that's another thing you have to buy separately. One of the biggest point that people complain about with the AC-15 is the lack of an effects loop. Now why Korg doesn't want to put an effects loop in these amp at this price point is something I can't understand. Why do you need an effects loop? Some people don't because they use all the amps, uh, all the pedals going straight into their amplifiers. And if that's how you use it, that is fine. But if you're using the gain from the amp itself and you want to use other pedals, maybe you don't want to use the reverb from your amp. You want to use an external, uh, external reverb or maybe you want to use delay and sending delay through a dirty amp doesn't sound that great. So an effects loop, especially considering how many people gig with the AC-15, would make sense. But Korg hasn't really listened to anyone, so some people have to get their amps modified by technicians. In my opinion, the amp should come out with an effects loop. Not everybody get, wants to use it, but for those that want to use it, it would be a great option. It is, after all, a great gigging amp, and a lot of people use effects loops. Power scaling would be another great feature, but this one doesn't have it. The AC30 head, I believe, has power scaling, but why they put it in the head, but they don't put it in the amplifier, beyond me, I don't know. So there are some really weird decisions made on the part of Korg, where they don't seem to be listening to what the users want. Yeah, feature-wise, it's not the most modernized amp, and some people don't want to change the circuit. They just want to have the features that they need. So power scaling might have been a cool option, especially considering how many people have to play at home. The effects loop would have been great. Another thing that really bugs the piss out of me is when it comes time to changing the tubes. There's a really big panel on the back with a lot of screws. And you can't just stick your hand in there and just grab the tube and put it in. You have to remove everything and then get access to the tubes. And I think that could have been more well thought out on the parts of the engineer over at Korg to maybe make something that was more user friendly. Because if you're playing a show and a tube starts to go on you, removing all those screws and not losing anything and the time it takes to do that, you're going to be stressed out. Uh, it's not going to be fun. So changing tubes on these, uh, especially considering we don't have to bias anything, uh, you can just remove the tubes and put them back in. Especially for gigging musician, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Some people are going to say, ah, you can remove the back panel or I made my own back panel where I can just take it out easy. Of course you can do those things. But on the part of the company, I think they could have maybe thought of something a little more user friendly. And this is across the board, whether you use, I have the AC4, I had the AC10 for a while, and all of those are poorly thought out for the access to tubes, especially when you need to change them. It's really a bit of a tedious job. Features, yeah, I think they lack just a little bit in that department. But I mean, it's not the end of the world. A lot of these things you can do without. If you absolutely need an effects loop, then you're kind of shit out of luck with that one because none of them have it as far as I know. And it looks like Korg doesn't have any intention of putting one in and that really sucks because they really should listen to the people because there's a lot of diehard fans out there that would find these amps to be perfect if they would have those types of features. So let's move on to the next con. Now my next issue with the Vox AC-15 is the weight. It's not a light amp. It's not a grab and go amplifier. If it just sits in your living room, that's not much of an issue. But if you're gigging regularly and you have to haul that amp around, um, yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, you know, I, I've tried uh, just grabbing different amplifiers in music stores when I was going out to buy the AC-15. You can grab the Blues Junior and bring it with you all day long. Not of an not an issue there. And as far as I remember, I think it's a 15 watt amp. 
But the AC-15, man, it's got the one handle on top and it just knocks against your knees. And I mean, I'm a pretty big guy and I'm fairly strong. And I grab that amp and I get tired out like really fast, especially if you have to walk upstairs. You're going to break into a sweat for sure, especially if you're out of shape. But uh, yeah, the weight is a bit of an issue. I don't know if it's because of the construction materials they use for the cabinet itself. Because the speaker is not that heavy, but the amp, especially now that I've put an Alnico Blue in there, ugh, it, it got even heavier now. So yeah, weight for gigging musician might be a thing. Um, some people might prefer putting it on some kind of roller or put casters underneath. Um, obviously, it's not as heavy as an AC-30 because those are just... Mm, stupid heavy but uh the ac-15 is no slouch uh you're gonna have to carry it around yourself put it put it in the back seat of your car maybe in uh, the trunk the boot for my uh british fellows so yeah uh, the weight i mean it's a considerably heavier amp than the ac-10 which is more grab and go so yeah consider that weight it's pretty heavy now, if you made it this far in the video, it's that you want to hear my final thoughts and my user experience with the AC-15. So let's look at it for what it is at this price point. Right now, currently, if you're buying an AC-15, it's quite expensive. It's getting up there. So when you get to like a thousand dollars, thousand euros and more, it's an investment on your part. If you're not hell-bent on having all the accoutrements of a modern amplifier, then you're going to be well-served with the AC-15. It's falling short on what users have needed for at least like 30 years now. It doesn't have the effects loop. It doesn't have power scaling. There's no foot switch included with it. I mean, you got tremolo and reverb. A lot of people kick those on when they need it. So not including it for the price point. I mean, I, I know it's... For some people, it's not going to be that big of a deal, but I think at the price we're paying now for these amps, those things should come with the amplifier. There's a lot of really dedicated, hardcore Vox fans out there. I'm definitely one of them. I love the amplifiers, but I do think that it would be really appreciated if Korg could actually listen to what people want instead of just coming up with things they think people want. Are there amplifiers out there in the same price range that could serve you well and give you all the options you need? 1000% of course. If I were to go out and buy an amplifier today and I had a limited budget and I was looking at the competition, I would have to make a decision between features and sound. If you love the sound of a Vox amplifier, sadly there's only them, as far as I know, that make a Vox amplifier in this price range. Meaning that if you're looking at all the features and you're like, I want to have power scaling, I want to have an effects loop, I want to have a foot switch that comes with the amp, I want to have uh, a DI out with two notes captor that, that comes with the amplifier that goes directly to my audio interface, I want to have built-in effects, I want to have this, this, and that. This is not the amp that you're looking for. That being said, if you're just looking for a great sounding amp that has that Vox sound, that is the amp that you need. Now, of course, there's the AC4, there's the AC10, and they do the Vox thing. They have different power ratings. They have a different uh, level output. So if we're counting dBs, uh, the AC15 is louder than the AC10, but there are plenty of people out there gigging with the AC10. They tend to just have a guitar plug straight into the AC-10 and they can perform, especially if you have the ability to put a mic in front of the amp. At this point, everything is fair game. But if you're playing gigs where you can't afford to put a mic in front of the amp because you don't have a big enough PA, the AC-15 will serve you for gigs. It can be used for home use, uh, but it is, it, it is a loud amp and it's not conceived for home use. So that's where I think the AC-15 kind of falls short. It's the features that people need in 2024 versus what Korg is putting out falls a bit short. But if you don't care about that stuff and you're more like, I just want the sound and I'll figure it out, then 100% I recommend the AC-15. It hasn't had any technical issues throughout the years that I've been using it. I've recorded so many videos and songs and stuff with it. It is great 
for studio use. So if you have a home studio and you need that sound, the AC-15 is perfect for that. I've mentioned the weight. I've mentioned the lack of features. So yeah, if you're just basing your purchase on that, there are other amps that seem far better, but they don't sound like a box. And that's the thing is that you're getting this amp for that sound. Are there manufacturers that can make something to sound like a Vox with all the accoutrements you might want? Yeah, but you're gonna be paying a premium. And it doesn't mean that where you live, you can have access to that amplifier to try it out yourself before actually purchase, purchasing it. So those are the things to consider. But I do believe that the AC-15 is a bit of a little marvel. It has all the, the sound, the chime, all that stuff that you want out of a Vox. It has it in spades. And I love how it always reminds me, like I have multiple amps and I get used to playing something like this one here, the Invaders amplification. It's more like a Fender basement. And I love that sound. I play with it and I'm like, oh my God, it's so great. And then I go back in and I plug into the AC-15 just to see how I feel. And every time it knocks me on my ass, I'm like, oh God, I'm never getting rid of that amp ever. It's one of my favorite combo amps ever. I can do without the extra features. I figured out a, like a workflow and it's all streamlined at this point. So that is my user experience with it. I think if you're looking for that sound, it's a no compromise thing. I think the price point is getting kind of scary high with these amplifiers, especially for fellow Canadians. Uh, that's starting to get into some serious money. So if you're thinking about grabbing one, I, I would do so like soon before they keep jacking up the price on these amps. Because like I said, I bought my AC-15 in 2017. I paid $899 Canadian and right now it's at what? Uh, 1099 Canadian. So that's a pretty considerable uptick on uh, the price. And especially if you're getting the one with the Alnico Blue. Yeah, that started to get, in my opinion, into boutique amp prices. So definitely do your own homework on this. My opinion doesn't really matter at this point what you do, which one you get, but it's really a matter of trying out the amps in person. It's super important. And if you live somewhere where there are no Vox AC-15s and you can't try it out, I highly suggest that you watch all the videos that I have pertaining to the AC-15 on this channel. It doesn't really replace the experience of you being in the room, but it can give you a sense of what maybe makes more sense for your specific needs. So yeah, if you're into the Vox stuff, if you love the Vox AC-15, or if you love pedals in general, you might want to consider checking out some of the other stuff I have on this channel. I'm going to have some playlists in the description. So as always, I'm very thankful to have you here on the channel. Let me know what you think of this video. And did I fall short? Did I miss something? Is there anything I said you don't agree with? Let me know in the comments. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers.